Welcome to Countdown to Halloween. So stay tuned for Halloween and spooky themed videos all the way up until October 31st. I also want to say thank you so much for the support and I truly, truly value each and every one of my subscribers and viewers. And I just want to say thank you for that. There's a creepy urban legend about a mannequin that's suspended from the ceiling of a spooky ride at an amusement park. The mannequin turned out to be a corpse. That urban legend is referred to as the carnival corpse and it's actually true. And this is the real story behind it. It's an actual true tale from the crypt. During the filming of an episode of The Six Million Dollar Man in 1976, a crew member spotted a mannequin hanging from a rope in the corner. When he moved it, the arm broke off at the elbow. When he tried to reattach it, he saw bone surrounded by muscle and tissue inside the skin. The body was that of poor old Elmer McCurdy. Before Elmer was even born, he already had the odds stacked against him. He was born on New Year's Day in 1880 to a 17-year-old single mother who couldn't even tell him who his father was. When he was 19, she died, and then his grandfather, who took care of him, died a month later. Eventually, Elmer had tuberculosis, and he began to drink, and he unsuccessfully attempted a variety of careers, but he failed at every single one, and poor Elmer was a lost soul who just couldn't catch a break. So one day he attempted to hold up a train in Oklahoma. Unfortunately for him, he only scored $46 and two bottles of whiskey. Two days later, he was found in a hay shed by three sheriffs and a pack of bloodhounds. Elmer swore that he would not be taken alive and he got his wish after an hour long gunfight. So he was taken to the funeral home. And after Joseph Johnson finished his autopsy and his embalming, he turned his funeral home into a circus sideshow, with Elmer's arsenic-filled remains being the exhibit. After six months, his body was still unclaimed. So Elmer was posed with a rifle in his hand and put on display, and for five cents, people could view his corpse. It wasn't unusual for embalmers to put unclaimed bodies on display to help with identification and also as a way to advertise their services. In 1916, two men came by and said they were Elmer's brothers and they were there to claim his body. They were really carnival owners. Poor Elmer's decomposing body was now traveling all across the country with the Great Patterson Carnival Show. Around 1933, Elmer was being displayed in the lobby of movie theaters. And after that, he was mostly just gathering dust in storage closets, unless he was needed as a Halloween prop at parties, or when someone wanted to prank a co-worker by chasing them with Elmer's detached arm. In 1968, he was sold to the Hollywood Wax Museum, and while he was exhibited there, the corpse was damaged when the tips of his ears, along with his fingers and his toes, were broken off. Elmer was now considered too gruesome and not lifelike enough for the Wax Museum. After the wax museum closed later that year, Elmer got mixed up with some other wax dummies and he was eventually sold to the Pike Amusement Park in Long Beach, California. And there he was dressed as a cowboy. He was placed in a corner. He was painted a fluorescent red or orange color and he was hung from fake gallows as spooky decor for a ride in the Laugh in the Dark Funhouse. The people who viewed Elmer at the carnival would put coins in his mouth because it was partially open. Elmer had been seen by hundreds of people at the carnival, but no one suspected a thing. And some thought the dummy was just made out of paper mache because it moved at the slightest breeze. And he had been hanging in that back corner for four years. And as the passenger carts blew by, he would swing back and forth, back and forth. After the $6 million man crew member discovered the body and checked to make sure that it was actually a man and not a man again authorities were contacted. The crew members verified that he was a real man by checking in between his legs. Yes, everything was dry and shriveled up, but no mannequin would have those parts. I'm just going to leave it at that. And the clues to his identity were found inside of his body. Things found inside were a bullet jacket, some coins, and a ticket stub. And the autopsy report also notes where he lost parts of his earlobes, his fingers, and his toes. His body was sent to Oklahoma for burial under the condition that the burial not become some ridiculous circus and that it be respectful. 
and two yards of concrete were also placed on top of his coffin to make sure that it wouldn't be tampered with. There's an urban legend about a victim being mistaken for Halloween decoration. That legend is unfortunately true. And in 2005, one such incident took place in Frederica, Delaware. A woman from a tree that was about 15 feet above the ground and it was also close to the road. And the Frederica Firehouse was just down the street. People that drove or walked by noticed it about 7.30 in the morning on a Wednesday, but they assumed that it was just Halloween decoration. Authorities were called to the scene a little before 11 that morning. An officer went to check it out after he received calls, but he too assumed that it was just decoration. So anyone that called 911 after that were also told the same thing, that it was just decoration and to not worry about it. A young boy also rode his bike by it and he went home and told his mother what he saw. She called his father, who was a fireman, and he went to check it out. The father just wasn't sure, so he called another fireman, and that's when they realized that it was. And the lady lived close to where her body was found. Halloween decorations grown from a simple jack-o'-lantern on a porch to 12 feet skeletons in a front yard. Some decorations are so realistic that it's sometimes hard to tell the difference between a prop and an actual body in a tree. Take this picture for example, it's just decoration, but a man was also found laying in front of his house the same way by the mailman, and he was mistaken for decoration. And if you saw this prop from the back, you wouldn't be sure if it was real or not. And people have run up to this prop and tried to give it CPR until they realized what it was. On October the 13th, 2015, the body of 31-year-old Rebecca Cade was hanging from a fence near an American electric power construction site located at North Brownell Street and Harden Drive in Chillicothe, Ohio. She was found hanging from a fence and her body was also mistaken for just another macabre Halloween decoration. Police were called to the area just before 8.30 on a Tuesday when a man walking his dog found a cell phone, a driver's license, and a shoe. Investigators believe that on the night of her death, she and a man named Donnie were in a field arguing, but it's not known how they knew each other. He started chasing Rebecca and as she was trying to climb over the barbed wire fence, her sleeve got caught on it and she was left hanging on that fence. Her left hand was positioned in such a way that it looked as if she was waving to everyone that went by. A bloody rock was also found nearby and 27 year old Donnie was arrested that same day. And Rebecca's body was so badly injured that it was impossible to tell if she was a man or a woman at the time. Rebecca really tried to get her life back together and her friends and family also offered to help. And when she get arrested on a minor charge, they thought that maybe this would be the time that she would turn her life around and this would finally help her get sober. But that never happened. And Denise Hughes is raising Rebecca's son who was 15 months old at the time. In 2009, 75 year old Mustafa Zaid sat slumped over and decomposing on his third floor balcony in Marina del Rey and neighbors saw his body because it was in plain view of the entire apartment complex but they didn't call the authorities because it looked just like a Halloween dummy. A neighbor told reporters that Mustafa was sweet and gentle and would always say hello. This urban legend is sometimes referred to as the accidental hangman. In these stories, it's usually a male teenager that's pretending to hang themselves in front of an audience for shock value or entertainment. A few minutes after the stunt, however, it becomes obvious that something has gone horrifically wrong. And here are three incidents of accidental hangings. And in these situations, the person is usually placed in a harness that supports their weight. So when they drop down, their neck doesn't snap and their windpipe isn't constricted. In New Jersey in 1990, Brian Jewell died while performing this stunt during a haunted hayride that was ran by Ocean Haunted Hayrides Incorporated. Brian would normally speak to those on the hayride as they passed, so the driver of the hay wagon's tractor was concerned when he failed to deliver his scheduled speech when they arrived at Brian's stop. The noose that was around his neck wasn't the type that tightens, and during the stunt he would step down about one foot to the ground, but for some reason it didn't work. It had worked before, but it didn't work that night, and about 40 people on the hayride went by him that night. The hayride was suspended after Brian's death, and he was a junior at Tom's River High School in southern New Jersey, and there was no indication of foul play. 
This job was right up Caleb's alley because he loved running around in the dark and he loved Halloween. He loved to scare people, his mother said, but in October of 2001, Caleb was working a haunted hayride attraction at Alpine Ridge Horse Farms in Sparta, Michigan, and he didn't come home that night. According to reports, he felt awkward just jumping out of the woods to scare people, so he wanted to add a little something to it, so he decided to switch places with a skeleton that was hanging by a rope in a tree nearby. So he put the rope around his neck, but when he let go of it, his mother said that he wasn't heavy enough to prevent the branch from whipping back and choking him. And while he was struggling to remove the double knotted rope off of his neck, his co-workers just what he was acting. But when they realized he wasn't, they, along with those on the hayride, tried to resuscitate him. But he was pronounced dead at the scene. In 2011, 17 year old Jessica Rue accidentally herself on her second day working for Creepy World in Fenton, Missouri. But luckily, she survived. Her job was to scare people as they walked through a bathroom scene that was soaked in fake blood. And just like in other cases, the visitors that passed by and saw her struggling believed that it was just a part of the show. What exactly happened isn't known, but it's thought that she was standing on the edge of the bathtub when she slipped and fell, and police found shoe scuff marks on the wall and inside of the tub. Jessica doesn't remember what happened because she spent three days in a coma and she suffered neurological damage and she now also suffers with headaches, dizzy spells, confusion, heart flutters, and occasionally she has blackouts. Her personality has also changed. She gets easily frustrated and sometimes she will give rude answers to simple questions. She's also had to call for directions on how to get home because she simply can't remember the way. Please be careful out there.